This satellite foundational course for GOZAR will teach you what you need to know about the scanning of the Advanced Baseline Imager, the ABI, on GOZAR. In addition, you'll learn about the improvements on ABI related to improved spectral, spatial, and temporal resolution, how parallax can affect what you see, what the better bit depth on ABI means, and how multiple satellites with different resolutions can view North America. The authors of and contributors to this training are listed. They all work at the University of Wisconsin-Madison Cooperative Institute for Meteorological Satellite Studies. Learning objectives for this module are listed on this screen. Take some time to read through them. There has been an immense increase in the amount of data sent by the ABI compared to the imager on GOES 13 through 15. The ABI on GOES R acquires a full disk image five times faster than the legacy imager on GOES 13 through 15. Spatial resolution on the ABI compared to legacy GOES increased by a factor of two in both horizontal directions. And there are about three times more spectral bands on GOES R. The cubes represent the data volumes from the le legacy GOES in dark orange and the new GOES R in beige. The combination of increased resolutions meant at least a 60-fold increase in data. This has caused issues, mostly resolved, in storage and retention of data. The default scan mode for GOES 16 in 2018 is mode 3, or flex mode, shown here. The time time chart shows when and where the ABI is scanning in strips of 30 second intervals across the top, with sequential 30 second strips starting down the left hand side. During the 15 minutes shown on this chart, one full disk image is scanned, three conus images are scanned, and one mesosector is scanned 30 times. Alternatively, two different mesosectors can be scanned 15 times. Note that each conus image is acquired in only 48 seconds that are spread out over 3 minutes, but they start 5 minutes apart. White space on this chart is instrument idle time. That's when no radiation is being sensed by the ABI. This is the time time chart of the continuous full disk mode. This is the highest data rate for Gozar's ABI and results in a full disk every 5 minutes. No mesos can be scanned during continuous full disk. This might be used if multiple high-impact weather and volcanic events are happening within the ghost's R footprint. If you look at the Mode 3 time time chart on page 4, there's a lot of white space on that chart, or idle time for the instrument. There's so much idle time, in fact, that you can remove much of it and have 10-minute full disks, shown in pink, and still maintain 5-minute conus imagery in blue and two mesoscale sectors in green. This mode 6 is being tested in 2018 for an eye to operations. 10 minutes scanning of full disk imagery would align with Japanese scanning with Himawari. But in 2018 the default scanning mode remains mode 3. One full disk every 15 minutes, one conus image every 5 minutes, and two mesoscale sectors every minute. You can also overlay mesoscale images so you can get 30 second scanning. This figure shows spatial resolution for Gozar. Pixel areas are approximate, as a function of color. Apologies to those in the audience with color deficiency. This is for Gozar in the Goes West position. Conus and the default mesosectors are shown. These mesos are movable and have a thousand by a thousand kilometer size at the subsatellite point. The mesoscale regions have different sizes and shapes for different geographic locations, but they have the same size in the number of horizontal lines scanned and the number of vertical elements scanned. For bands 1, 3, and 5 on ABI, a spatial resolution of 1 square kilometer occurs at Nader, the subsatellite point. Each color bin here is rounded to the nearest square kilometer. The first dark blue ring labeled 1 shows pixel areas from 1 to 1 and a half square kilometer. The next lighter blue shows pixel sizes between 1 and a half and 2 and a half square kilometers and is labeled 2, and so on. This is the same kind of figure, but for Gozar in the central Goz test location with the Kona sector indicated and two mesoscale image sectors shown. And here's the figure for Goz 16 in the Goz East location with the Kona sector indicated. The default location of the Goz East mesoscale sectors are shown, but they can be moved anywhere. If you're in a WFO and you want satellite imagery more than every 5 minutes over Conus or more than every 10 to 15 minutes over Alaska, call a meso. The methods to do this may vary by region, so ask management how it's done. 
You can find a link to this site that displays current and planned mesosectors in the store on VLAB. This table shows the better spectral, spatial, and temporal resolution of the ABI. What does on-orbit cal mean for reflective bands? That means that goes east visible and goes west visible will look similar even as the satellites age. This chart shows the 16 bands, their central wavelength, the wavelength range, the resolution, and the band nickname. The reflective bands have generally little utility at night. The exception is 1.6 and 2.2 micrometer channels that can have a signal for fires or volcanoes at night. Band 2 on ABI continues observations at 0.64 micrometers that were done on previous GOES imagers. Note that bands 1, 3, and 5, the odd numbers, are the bands with 1 kilometer resolution. Band 2 has half kilometer resolution, the best, and bands 4 and 6 have 2 kilometer resolution. Here we have the infrared bands on ABI. The number of infrared bands has increased by a factor of 2.5 from 4 on legacy GOES to 10 on goes -R. Stars appear approximately where GOES imagers observed data in the past. Bands 7 and 16 have close matches on legacy GOES imagers. The water vapor band and window bands on ABI are similar but not exact matches to legacy GOES. Here's a graphical image of legacy GOES bands as they would be seen from the test position at 89.5 west, all five of them, visible, shortwave infrared, water vapor, infrared window, and carbon dioxide. Here's the same graphical image of GOES-R bands. A lot more data flows from GOES-R. This shows the spectral response functions for the visible and near-infrared bands, as well as the reflectance for different surfaces. These ABI bands are useful mostly only during the day, with some exceptions for the 2.2 and 1.6 micrometer channels. Reflective, reflectivity differences between bands means that what is evident in one band might not be in another band. For example, snow is bright white in the visible, but it's not very reflective at all at 1.6 micrometers. Some sample uses for the bands are listed, but many more exist. The red line in this figure shows brightness temperatures that would be computed from satellite observations above the U.S. standard atmosphere at various wavelengths, assuming a clear sky. The spectral response functions for the infrared bands on ABI are also shown in blue, as well as the band number and the band nicknames. In some regions, around 10.3 micrometers for example, Atmospheric absorption is small and the computed brightness temperature is the surface temperature of the U.S. standard atmosphere. The satellite detects radiation that is emitted from the surface and escapes directly to space. This is a window channel. In contrast, energy around 6.5 micrometers that leaves the surface is strongly absorbed by water vapor in the atmosphere and then re-emitted from a higher, colder region. At some point in the vertical, when water vapor no longer exists above a region, the re-emitted energy will escape unabsorbed to space, but it will be from a far colder region so a colder temperature is shown. In addition to water vapor absorption, absorption by carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and ozone is present. The different bands or channels had different uses as listed on this chart. There are lots of other uses too. Let's switch topics. Parallax is a well-known misnavigation that appears when something, a cloud feature in the atmosphere, blocks the view of the surface. In clear conditions, satellite observations come from the surface pixel and are navigated to that point. If a sensor is pointing in a particular direction, the navigation places the information at the surface. All satellite navigation assumes clear skies. A cloud that develops between the pixel and the satellite, however, will mean that the information from the surface is blocked. Instead, radiation will come from a region that is closer to the satellite, but that is nevertheless navigated to where the straight line emission from the Earth would have originated in the cloud-free atmosphere, because after all the sensor is pointing in that same particular direction associated with the surface point. Parallax error is related to how high a cloud is and how far that cloud is from the subsatellite point, with the effect increasing for higher and higher clouds and for points farther and farther from the subsatellite point on the equator. 
Here's an example of how the storm report shifts relative to the storm structure in a native projection and in a parallax corrected storm report. Parallax correction uses infrared imagery because the correction is a function of height derived from infrared temperature. Those corrections are then applied. This shows GOES-16 ABI and MRMS radar views of storms in Minnesota and Wisconsin when GOES-16 was in the test position at 89.5 degrees west longitude. A parallax shift is obvious. Satellite information is shifted away from the subsatellite point, in this case almost due south of the storms. If this were ABI from the GOES east position, the parallax shift would have the storm farther to the northwest. Parallax is a function of storm height and location with respect to the subsatellite point. For any given WFO and satellite, the parallax shift will always be in the same direction. No routine parallax correction is applied to ABI data in AWIPS. Now let's talk about bit depth. GOES-R sends many more bits of information than legacy GOES did. In general, legacy GOES had 8 bits of information at each pixel, 256 different values. GOES-R sends between 11 to 14 bits depending on the band. This means higher precision in the measurements. AWIPS can display 11-bit, 12-bit, and 14-bit enhancements, and your eye can discern differences between 8 and 11-bit enhancements. This is an 8-bit display. The next slide will show 11-bit imagery. The 11-bit presentation shows subtly smoother gradients. 8-bit presentations from the previous slide have been cut out and are displayed near their 11-bit counterparts. The importance of one-minute sampling is well known. GOES-R offers mesoscale sectors with one-minute sampling so that better monitoring of cloud top features or fires, for example, are possible. Examples are available at the URLs listed. In addition, the figure insert shows brightness temperatures for the Buffalo, Oklahoma fire of 18 February at one minute increments. The red dots show how the fast changing fire would be sampled at five minute increments. Many quick changes are missed with a five minute sampling frequency. An important part of mesoscale sectors on GOES-R is that they can move. If something the figure shows tropical storm Aleta in the Pacific Ocean occurs outside of routine CONUS 5-minute scanning. Put a meso on top of it to see what's happening with better temporal scanning. GOES-15 is still operational as GOES-West as this module is made. Why does GOES-16 give better resolution than GOES-15? In the near future, when GO two GOES-R satellites are operational as East and West, which satellite should you use? To answer the second question first, and in all goes our constellation, goes east sits over 75.2 west, and goes west sits at 137 west. Halfway between is about 106 west, so you might want to use goes east to the east of that longitude and goes west to the west of it. 106 west is near Glasgow, Montana, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. The reality after goes 16 became goes east, and goes 15 was still operational as goes west was that GOES East had superior spatial resolution all the way to 120 degrees west longitude. That's the longitude of the north-south California-Nevada border. In practice, many west coast WFOs defaulted to GOES-16 because of the superior temporal and spectral resolution. In addition, GOES-16 data flows more rapidly into AWIPS than GOES-15. This figure shows the GOES-R satellites east and west combined and their two CONUS projections both scanned every five minutes and offering coverage from the Aleutians to the Eastern Caribbean and from Hawaii to the Canadian Maritimes. Here are some acronyms from this training. There are also two links you can click to view more about GOES-R or to go to the store. This summary slide will remind you what you've just learned. This is the conclusion of the Satellite Foundational course for GOES-R on basic operations of the ABI on GOES-R. Thanks for your attention.